Hello everyone. All right, we're back to talk about the Rashis. This is about cancer in part of the series of the 12 zodiac signs going into the details and more of like the unique Vedic astrology details that you might not know about already. So cancer is the um, cancer is the crab Rashi as you know. So it's described uh, by Prashra as pale red, moving in water, a Brahmin, vigorous at night, many moving legs, a stout body, endowed with sattva, watery and back rising is thought the crab Rashi ruled by the moon. So let's break down each one of those things one by one. So pale red is pink. So cancer is the color pink. Um, and that makes perfect sense because cancer is a sign of like the feminine, the moon. It's the only 100% receptive sign and energy there is. So that pink makes a lot of obvious sense really. Um, don't need to go into that too much. So then moving in water, it symbolizes working through emotions and being emotional, basically being in the fema the, the feeling realm. Um, Brahmin, it is a moksha sign, is a priestly sign, is a Brahmin sign devoted to knowledge and um, wisdom. And these water signs are kind of dealing with the more invisible side of life. Um, same with the fire signs. The earth and air signs deal with more worldly things. Vigorous at night, um, many moving legs. It is many moving legs is very similar to how in western astrology they talk about how the crab has a claw and it just clings and just attaches and just you know it symbolizes that moon the mind the the, the attachments that the mind has and how the mind is the source of that clinginess and that attachment so cancer is a very is more clingy or it, it might need to be it just depends on the way the chart's going and that's what that many moving legs can symbolize that's at least the most sense i've been able to make of it and then a stout body uh so yeah um stout body kapha it's a kapha kind of sign and it's especially really noticeable with men they'll be more like stout and not have as many of those like typical angular masculine features and all and or the men might have like a more puffy chest as well um if they're really working out and all the stuff because cancer rules the chest the chest region of the body and the breast you know um and then it's endowed with sattva it's a uh, inspired sign the water signs are um tend towards that way watery and back rising is thought the crab rashi so yeah that's pretty much uh it now i want to you know now i want to talk about this in the context of like charts and go over a few example charts Okay, so here we have the chart of Ramana Maharshi, a really famous South Indian saint and someone who is considered to be very highly self-realized. Um, we see that he has the moon in Cancer in the 10th house. So it's a very, very strong moon. Moon is a Brahmin planet, like we said, Brahmin sign. And it deals with the mind. But it's with Ketu as well. And Ketu makes things very introverted and can give... Uh, can indicate a tremendous deal of great past life karma in terms of like yoga and renunciation and spiritual practices. And we notice that K2 in cancer shows that he's done a ton of, you know, if when K2 is in cancer and then the Lord of K2 is quite strong, like moon there, it shows that, wow, he's had some really good karma to do with K2 in cancer in the past life. So he's done very good, water sign Brahm, uh, Brahmin priestly moksha related activities in past lives. And it's also kind of cool because his ruling planet is Venus and it's in the second house, which is also, uh, well, when we get to Scorpio, that's also a Brahmin sign, just so you know, that's also a moksha sign. And we also see the other Brahmin or moksha sign Pisces has got a really beautiful Jupiter there. So he has actually what they call in Western, they call it a grand trine of water, but um, we can just see that he has a high, high um, spiritual karmas to work out in this life with all that water activity. So keep, keep the water signs in mind when you're thinking about spirituality and moksha and knowledge and wisdom and stuff. They'll come up a lot. Um, there's so much that could be said about Ramana Maharshi's chart. 
Um, one thing that I want to point out is that he was born in an eclipse. You see that the sun and the moon are opposite within 18 degrees of Rahu or Ketu, so you know there was an eclipse going on. And so he was born in an eclipse. Um, eclipses can make really, really extreme souls being, you know, can really indicate very extreme souls. Sometimes very like, you know, dark, uh, kind of ugly souls can be born in eclipse. And then other times really, really high spiritual swan like Paramahansa souls can be born. And uh, another example would that be uh, Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley was born in eclipse. Um, Donald Trump is also an eclipse person. Um, but uh, yeah, this is Ramana Maharshi. When I talk about Rahu and Ketu, sometimes you might have heard me talk about how like the Lord of Rahu will speak to where Rahu, where one needs to go with Rahu, and then Lord of Ketu will speak to where one um, one's past life karma. And sometimes it's usually really important to go towards Rahu. But in certain cases, that's not always the case. And so here, excuse me, um, Rahu is, it's my Rahu in the second house for me. Whenever I go to speak, all of a sudden I like burp and all of a sudden I can't speak. And I'm just like, all I'll do is talk all day outside of that. And as soon as I go on the camera, I'm sorry, you guys, but I get all this weird stuff happens in my throat. Um, Rahu and Saturn are this is the thing is that Saturn's debilitated. So like working on Rahu is showing like really negative karma. There's nothing good there. So it's interesting. There's a lot more to it than that, but you can kind of get a hint that like, wow, this is a soul that's maybe not about going more forward in life. And then K2, if K2's lore was also debilitated, it'd be like, oh, this is just, this person's just going to have a confusing mess of a life. But because K2 is so strong, the Lord of K2 is with K2 Basically, K2's agenda just dominates this chart. It's K2's in the 10th house, you know, and it's with its Lord. And so that that agenda of K2 of internalization and moksha and liberation and the Brahmin stuff is actually what takes over and in a really good way for him because he got self-realized. Um, and I know a lot of y'all are thinking, wow, that debilitated Saturn. Is he Was he really a good guru or is this like fake and, and stuff? But Note that the Saturn is exalted in the D60 chart. And, you know, Saturn will be in Aries for two and a half years. So you can't just say that everyone born in a two and a half year window is like not good or something like that. That's too simplistic. And it's not how we want to be with astrology. And plus that Saturn's in the seventh house. So it shows other people have all this, the negative Saturn karma, not him, you see. So it means like all the foolish people who would come and sit and try to ask him questions and never get the picture and never get the message of what he was saying. So he would just remain silent. So we can kind of see how that debilitated Saturn was there. In fact, Saturn in Aries like gives one a lot of problems that they can't really ever fix. And they need to just kind of accept that. So if you think about it, like he was a yogi and his, uh, if you ever read the talks of Ramana Maharshi and stuff, all these, you know, all people from all around the world, even a lot of Englishmen and Westerners were coming to see him. And they were mainly just wanting like solutions to their like annoying little problems. And he was like, you're not going to find those solutions. You need to find the self. You know what I mean? And then you're going to have all your problems solved. So we can kind of see that uh, reflected in his work. Now we have the chart of Salvador Dali. He was a cancer ascendant. Um, the thing about cancer is that it's the sign of like uh, the sign of wonder and awe and, you know, Mars, the planet of like fighting and war and concepts and, or, you know, this is what I need to do. He gets debilitated there. He goes to sleep there and one is delighted by the moon at the same time. So the, there's like a subjective quality of wonder that the, that cancer has to do with cancer rules, like the magical worlds, the magical realm. Cancer rules the um, the surreal, you know what I mean? The dream, the dream state. It rules these sorts of these sorts of states. So, cancer, you know, we can see that Salvador Dali was a sur one of the most well-known surrealists, or uh, uh, yeah, and uh, he one of the most well-known surrealists of all time and everything. So you can see how Cancer was part of his path, being in that realm, being in the dreamlike state, and his moon is in the tenth with the strong Jupiter and all this stuff. And we won't go into the rest of that, but very imaginative person, you know, cancer is the mind, the moon, it rules imagination, rules music, 
the moon rules writing, the moon rules the subjective side of life. And this man was a wonderful artist who did a lot of great work in that area of life. He was also so technically proficient, and that was that Rahu and Virgo, because if you had Rahu and Virgo, it's really important to become like technically, you know, like play, do the rules, follow the rules, know how to actually paint and use your instruments, um, which he was really good at, not just imagining cool stuff. Um, K2 and Pisces, a lot of times, you know, might do that too much if it's not doing the Rahu Virgo, the learning the skills and all. Angelina Jolie, here we have a cancer, cancer ascendant. She's a very you know, famous woman and that's her, her ruling planet moon goes to the 10th house. And that kind of shows like what you're going to do with that path of cancer. So she was like, a, you know, a very important figure, an actor, a mover and a shaker. She uh, got a lot of her fame be by being like kind of like an intense or uh, heroic or aggressive act uh, character in most of her movies, which could be related to Aries. And Venus and Saturn there, there's actually a really cool article written about Angelina Jolie by one of the students of Astral Vedic Astrology in that, the, the courses they have. So if you want to know more about her chart astrologically, you could look up a good article um, with, if you, if you looked up Astral Vedic Astrology and Angelina Jolie, probably you would find it. And so she goes into this a lot more, but Angelina Jolie actually wanted to be a funeral, a funeral director, I believe. So she was actually very dark. She had a like dark uh, experiences growing up. She even like cut herself and stuff. And so that Saturn, Venus and cancer makes a lot of sense. Um, the moon is waning and Saturn and Venus are, so that means they're starved by a malefic moon, a dark, a waning moon. It's very, very strong. Um, but if you notice she has waned, like in, and that's the thing is the waning moon will give less and less of life goes as life goes on. Often the waxing moon will add, but she has kind of waned physically, like her body, she used to be so full and voluptuous and she's like looking really scary now on the tabloids and all that stuff. And, you know, cancer is that planet that changes and fluctuates a lot. It fluctuates the most. It's natural and it's part of the fluctuations but you can get really unhealthy fluctuations when you have saturn in cancer oftentimes saturn is star by the moon it's enemy there um you know and remember this is a sign of the of women women's bodies are actually naturally supposed to fluctuate a little bit throughout the month and that's natural but then you know like you get a cruel planet involved and it could be more extreme um so that's a little bit on angelina jolie's chart Let's look at George Lucas. Um, George Lucas uh, had a pretty huge impact on the world um, with his films, Star Wars. And we can see that Rahu and Mars are together here in Cancer. Um, Rahu and Cancer means that it was really important for him to learn to like emphasize the subjective, emphasize the feeling, the emotional, the internal realm. What's fascinating is that Film is related to moon um, and cancer. And the whole process of like film making movies is highly, highly related to the moon. So we can see that it was indicated that he should do work involving that. Um, and Mars is debilitated here. So what's really cool about that is like I said, like it's when Mars is debilitating cancer, it's time to be kind of um, not battling, but enamored, you know, um, swept away by the beauty of, of life and the world and all these things. And so cancer can have to do a lot with like fantasy and sci-fi, you see, like science fiction and fantasy and these new realms and imagining new cre creatures and you know, the, the Moss Eisley cantina scene of Star Wars where Luke goes in and sees all these different, you know, aliens and he's all overwhelmed and stuff. That is kind of like the cancer uh, sort of energy and, and, a, and approach. So him working with, you know, Jim Henson and Muppets and pioneering all this technology to make movies, industrial light and magic. You see, he was creating all these little weird little worlds internally. K2 and Capricorn shows that in past lives, he was probably an, a figure who had more control on the actual world. You know what I mean? And he took that control, that drive and he and that motivation and he properly utilized it and, and used his Rahu and transformed it into the cancer area, which was like writing, storytelling, movies, feeling, getting emotional, you know, getting an emotional resonance with, a, with another person would be cancer. So 
Um, I'd say he's done his Rahu cancer well. And then Rahu Mars makes you have to like stand up for what's right and, um, you know, kind of like fight the good fight and be a good person and, and have good conduct. And he actually really is like that. Um, if you look into like his personal life, he's really against Hollywood. And he's like, there's a hilarious YouTube video about um, that I just once saw like George Lucas versus Hollywood. And it and it's, like, assembles all these clips of him over decades of, of him just criticizing and kind of battling with Hollywood executives to try to keep his vision and to try to do the right thing and not let them corrupt his vision for the sake of money, basically. Um, yeah, that's everyone I wanted to cover. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, that's the gist of it. I hope you guys Yeah, so that's, you know, that's it. I just wanted to cover some examples of the cancer sign. Hope you guys can get a feel for it um, and see how it works in practice. All right, take care.